and the fiscal rectitude and uh, all the neoliberal uh, mumbo jumbo that uh, we all have around us really not done anything dramatic in the budget concept that serves the interests of finance capital state governments have very limited powers under the constitution hello and welcome to news click the present dmk government has filed its first full budget for the financial year 2022-23 there have been many responses to the budget both positives and uh, critical negative responses but to have an expert view on the matter we have with us professor venkatesh atreya a former professor of the bharatidasan university and an adjunct faculty at the asian college of journalism hello sir uh, thanks a lot for joining us good evening so can you start by giving us a context to this budget uh, in what international and na- national context is it being presented as you all uh, no we have a very uh, uncertain and uh, critical international context of the russia ukraine war is the most recent add on complication big one but we had rising prices even before that and it's been a very uh, very slow very uncertain recovery not just through the pandemic but even from more or less from the 2008 industrial financial crisis for almost 15 years trend rate of growth in the advanced capitalist countries has been much less than the trend earlier so we are generally in an environment global environment of uh, very slow growth accompanied by now rising inflation uh, so this means uh, that uh, your prospects of uh, let's say increasing the growth rate through expansion of exports is rather dim um likewise with the disruption caused by the war uh, the consequent uh, impact on supply uh, lines and uh, chains as well as the rising prices of fuel they are all going to impact but strongly on the recovery prospects of all economies in india certainly is going to be pretty majorly impacted this is the overall situation so It's not a. Uh, I don't envy uh, PT finding well PT Tiyaka Rajin because he's having to present the budget in a difficult environment, and it's, to make that worse, we had a national uh, situation where the union government has been quite disastrous in its handling of the COVID pandemic and its policies. I would say right from uh, the you know absolutely uh, unwanted, unrequired uh, demonetization, completely uh, mad. to put it politely and then followed by the chaos caused by a very ham-handed gst all of which brought you to a very slow growth of the economy by 2019 got it much worse by uh, the pandemic and the way the union government has handled the pandemic both with uh, arbitrary country wide lockdowns and later on with uh, you know flip flops on vaccination essentially it's been a disaster the union budget which is now in tatters basically the numbers were not credible to begin with Uh, that's not going to be help uh, Tiagaraj in much, and uh, because the DMK is in an adversarial relationship to BJP, that's not going to help much either. So uh, it's a very great challenge that uh, Tiagaraj faces. So the budget um, which is presented has reduced the fiscal deficit of the state, and the finance minister has been very proud of this. Uh, after eight years, it has been uh, reduced. So is it a good thing? Shouldn't the government generate more funds and? spend on the people how do you see this panil tagarajan had emphatically expressed his commitment to fiscal reform and the fiscal rectitude and uh, all the neoliberal uh, mumbo jumbo that uh, we all have around us so that was a matter of concern although in the first budget to be fair to to give him credit he did lower the state excess duty on petrol and diesel bring them down by 3 rupees uh, which is a big uh, gain for the people at that time uh this year again his budget is reiterated his commitment to implementing the tamil nadu fiscal responsibility act and bringing down the fiscal deficit below even the 15 finance commission norms likewise being the revenue deficit he has uh, really not done anything dramatic in the budget as far as allocations go pretty much uh, last year's allocations give it uh, 2% 3% 5% this way that so it's like a bit here a bit there uh there have been increases in outlays for education school education there has been practically no increase for higher education 
there's been a reduction for health and family welfare there's been a significant increase for rural development in panchayati raj uh, so there's some positives there but overall he has been so and you know uh, he was also thank you stars that uh, this year the actual revenue deficit the revised estimate turned out to be a bit lower than the budgeted estimate by about by 2000 crores but mainly because central revenues to the state were higher than expected in the budget partly because of the whole gst picking up and all that uh but that's a one time thing and uh, the gst compensation stops in the middle of this year june 2022 that's a matter of concern for the state also and the chief minister has requested for a two year extension the finance minister also, also talked about it in the budget but at the end of it uh, what strikes you is that he wants to reduce the um, revenue deficit very sharply and then the fiscal deficit to something like 3.9% is what he says uh, in relation to a 83 but in relation to a target of 4.1 uh, yeah it's a bit uh, the finance commission allows you a higher uh, fiscal deficit with this year but let me stop for a minute uh, to explain to the lay viewer what is this fiscal deficit all about <laughs> see the fiscal deficit is a very simple and very ideological concept very ideological and i mean what i say it takes the total expenditure of government okay current expenditure plus expenditure that goes to form assets capital expenditure and then it reckons as legitimate only those receipts do not come from borrowing in other words all non debt receipts is the lingo that they use which means basically it penalizes government borrowing it has a notion that governments have no business to be in business if at all they are doing some spending they must do it by selling assets not by uh, you know reducing borrowing they 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 consider government borrowing practically as not legitimate as a receipt ironic because you live in an economy where the private sector borrows heavily from publicly owned banks and no accountability of course you also shower them with the debt relief but here is an elected government borrowing and that in the fiscal there is a concept is considered not legitimate so it's a very neoliberal no no it's a very neoliberal concept it's a concept that serves the interests of finance capital and so we don't need to buy that as a as a holy grail at all now with that definition uh, the only way governments can raise expenditures to meet people's needs would be either through taxation which is frowned upon because then that in turn in the neoliberal regime means is a disincentive to investment by the rich by the private sector so if you not allowed to if you if you discourage from raising taxes or even collecting existing taxes effectively by better tax collection mechanisms then you are left only with selling public sector assets to raise resources because after all, the government gets uh, resources in the following ways one taxation two surpluses of government owned enterprises and three uh, charges levied for services the government provides to the population uh that has been raised repeatedly of course but it's difficult to do so year after year and in a environment like tamil nadu there's a fair amount of resistance to those kinds of increases uh the state governments have been denuded of taxation powers post gst act so now they have absolutely no powers to decide tax rates on commodities except for four items tobacco alcohol petrol and diesel these are the only items outside the gst and the gst council is heavily loaded with the union government uh, forces so state governments which are very large in fact they they rule over populations about over 80 70 million tamil nadu 80 million plus as large as uh, the federal republic of germany or the uh, uk or uh, france and yet they are treated like petty municipalities with no taxation powers uh, you know the old slogan used to be no taxation without representation in the old struggle for democracy in the us now there is representation but no taxation so <laughs> it's a very ironic situation but this is something that has to be fought we all must fight for the uh, you know essentially the change in the whole regime taxation regime with gst being questioned fundamentally but that's not going to happen tomorrow right so GST has been a big, uh, you know, uh, kind of impact on the states and their ability to raise revenues. The 
other thing is basically the divisible pool which the government of india when it collects taxes has to share with the states under the uh, finance commission awards now in that also uh, what the government of india has been doing and this is something that Raj- tagarajan pointed out even last year in his white paper it's been increasing the share of cesses and surcharges from about 10% of central tax revenue to about 20% which means these are not shareable with the states they don't go into the divisible pool so the states in general are hemmed in by the union governments very arbitrary uh, measures in respect of taxation and uh, even in when it comes to raising petrol and diesel taxes which the government of india has been doing they have taken recourse to this uh, gimmick of doing it through raising uh, cesses and surcharges rather than basic excise duty so that's one thing so there is a real financial constraint that the state governments face in response the state government uh, uh, it's not really doing anything different to generate funds right? no that's it. as the union government no no but that's that is a problem you see state governments this is people must understand it state governments are very limited powers under the constitution the more elastic sources of revenue like income tax you see when an economy expands income taxes will rise automatically okay uh that those elastic sources of taxation or with the government of india and in the rates of taxation on both corporate income and personal income which is basically decided by the government of india the concessions offered by the union government over the last several years to the tax to the big rich well to do taxpayers they have hurt the state governments because the shareable revenue goes down and um, you know there is very little to fault state governments on trying to raise taxes from own resources i mean this whole state own tax revenue is is very it's very difficult to raise it significantly what tagarajan has talked about and he did that before in an interview before the budget and uh, this is about improving tax collection mechanisms and so he hopes to get much more this year those are very optimistic estimates he, he hopes to get more through uh, collection of commercial taxes alcohol the excess duty on alcohol is often uh, not paid properly so he's trying to plug oh, whole loopholes there and so he hopes to, he in fact in that interview he says that if we had better tax collection mechanisms we could be actually recovering up to 2 to 3% of uh, G- gsdp the great gross state domestic product the other thing of course is non tax revenue so, for example check government has resources that leases out and so on so there are some there is some provision the some scope for state governments to increase revenue not none i wouldn't say none but far more limited than for the union government so one can be sympathetic to tyagarajan but nonetheless one must also say that uh, there has been no serious effort to explore these avenues further and or to mobilize other states in a common fight against the increasing centralization resorted to by the union government thanks a lot for joining us sir and laying out what this budget means for everyone And thanks a lot for joining us.